<laughs> Got one of the singers off in some in behind the hand. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start class. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and start the prayer. That was a quick answer. So, so what are we going to do now? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and, hey, how are you doing? You growing? <laughs> now let's go ahead and start a serious class. We ready? Good. Pray for the uh, oh, uh, I didn't notice. I'm uh, setting up and getting everything ready. And, oh yeah, brother can do it. Pray for me. Oh, brother can do it. Pray. So I noticed that I've been asking him constantly. He's the only one I ask, but I really appreciate you doing that. I'm praying for the class. Uh, I don't know why I'm picking you all the time, but I appreciate it. So brother can you go ahead and pray? Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and support the, the, the hearing of the word and yeah. let's pray that God gives him his, uh, that God gives him anointing. So let's go ahead and pray. God pray that you would bless Brother Nolan, give him your word, give him your anointing, so that we're ready to receive your word. Let's pray that our hearts are open and we can receive a blessing. In Jesus' name, Amen. I already I already told him, Brother Candido. I said you go ahead and study, go ahead and prepare. Or something in general for this class. Didn't say when, but um, and whenever he's ready, and whenever he has a lesson planned in the near future, he'll also come up and teach. Same thing with Brother Jeff. Uh, the first Sunday of March he'll be doing it because me and Kyle will be gone to Florida. So, so Florida is almost my second home at this point. So um, Brother Jeff will be teaching the first Sunday of March. Okay, so let's go ahead and have class. Good to see you. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's good to see you both as well. I uh, see this okay? Yeah. What does it say? Uh, yeah, okay, you can see it. All right, we're good. That was a test. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, okay. So this scripture, we've all seen this, you know, throughout time. And one of the one of the scriptures um, I've shared with you occasionally. Um, I'm still preparing to teach about Hebrews. That's something I still haven't got. You know, I'm not haven't got rid of it. I haven't forgot it. The book of Hebrews. There's a lot to go through. There's a lot of scriptures, and I'm trying to to get to it um, when I feel like the time is right. But about today, I was trying to think about what I'm going to teach, and there's a particular verse of scripture that I you know, ran across, and it was kind of one of those things that was, uh, oh yeah, this is a good scripture. It was one of those, oh by the way, scriptures, and then I started reading into it, and I thought, okay, let's go ahead and look at this particular verse of scripture in context. So, I, yes, exactly. I wanted to see it in context. But not, I wasn't going to just take one particular verse of scripture out. What I was going to do is I was going to read the entire thing in its context. <coughs> Instead of just pulling out that one particular scripture. When you read that particular scripture in context, it makes much more sense. So what I decided to do is take this commonly well-read one and take it in context. So who read, who, who wrote the book of Romans? The answer would be Paul. So let's go ahead and start the class. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And today, I, uh, well, I set this up uh, after midnight last night. So we put this together pretty quick. Every time I look at a scripture and... I have like my little shovel nearby, right? My hypothetical shovel. Like, do I go into it or or do I go deep using the shovel or do I go superficial and I do spoon? So ultimately, it's up to me. Do I just keep it at the surface and go just enough to keep the class going with a spoon and dig into it with a spoon, or do I do it with my with my shovel? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot more labor intensive, but. In reality, it's not one of those things I have to do. What it is is something I want to do. This is my passion. I dig not only for you, but I also dig for my benefit. Because then I can increase my relationship with God. And then by, by, you know, by continuing that, I'm able to turn around and tell you what I've learned. So, uh, oh, and brother, brother Jeff, here's the title of the lesson. Spirit of Life. This particular scripture, there's, it's, it's 
comes later, I'll get to it. What's usually taken out of context, I put it in the context, so we'll, we'll get there when we get there. You're right, right? It goes from verse 1 down, so. Thank you, Brother Kenita, for praying. I didn't realize that I, uh, I, get, I use you quite often, so. All right. It's interesting. When you read this, these scriptures. <laughs> Basically, when you when you when you if I, I say if you squint, you start to understand a little more. Maybe if you don't squint, you're probably not going to understand understand as much. But uh, let's go ahead and follow here. Should I drive my Ferrari or should I go a bike? You know, do I go fast? You want to? You guys can keep up, or I'll go as fast as you guys can follow. <laughs> God is good all the time. And if you're having a bad day, you may have had a bad day yesterday, God is still good, and God is good all the time. Verse 1 reads, There is therefore... There's more to this than just meets the eye, and I wanted to go into it, but I will possibly do so uh, and bring it to Brother Jan's church. We're going to be going the last week of March. The last week of March we'll be preaching and teaching. I'll be using this. Um, there's more that comes before this, but it reads, therefore, <clears throat> there is therefore, and, and understand that um, chapter 7, chapter 6, these are scriptures that come up all the way until chapter 8. Uh, for today, we're just going to go ahead and do just chapter 8 and go into the context of chapter 8. Okay? All right. Following so far? Okay. Again, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. What is that? What is that? Tell me. No one. Uh, okay, there we go. This is how I would sign it. So again, verse one. There is therefore because of basically there is because of that. Right, because of what was mentioned in chapter 6 and chapter 7, preceding chapter 8. Obviously, then you get to the point here, and I understand every word has its place and has a reason for being in our Bibles. I'm not just signing C signs, so to speak. You know, I'm not going to sign, I am going to the store this way, and then said, there was no milk. I was upset. <laughs> no, that's not how I'm going to do that. That's not what, yeah. Hey, the point of this is, I'm signing, you know, we do conversational signs, but when it comes to the Word of God and when we research it and we delve into it, we need to follow verbatim what it says because of how important it is. So I know some people are not in agreement, so. Again, there is therefore now no condemnation to them. Who are they? Who's them? Mm hmm. There we go, right there. She nailed it. She nailed it. No. Look at this. You understand it in the context. You know who the them is referring to. Though. Um, so there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ. What does that mean? Then, which are, so those people and what they're doing right now, it's not a past tense thing. It says, oh, they were in Christ, or they, it was a thing that happened. Now it's no longer a thing. No, no, no. They are. To them which are currently. Present tense. If I, if I was, would then I be condemned? I mean, what else can I say? According to the scripture, if you are, there is no condemnation. So... Therefore, now, no condemnation to them, which are currently present tense right now, are in Christ. You go back up and look at chapter the previous chapters, you understand that this is written to the church. And this applies to each and every one of us. Okay. So, follow me, follow me, okay. 
Now I just jumped onto my motorcycle from my bicycle, so we'll speed this up a little bit. So there is no condemnation to them which are currently presently in Christ. Which are in Christ Jesus, who, scripture reads here, who walk not after, do you sign over for after? Oh, there we go, that sign, that sign. Not, this is not the after we're referring to here. This is the after we're referring to here. So, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I understand. There's no condemnation because I'm walking according to the Spirit. I'm walking in Christ. But if I do so according to the flesh, there is condemnation. Because according, if you do it to your own flesh, there is sin. Right. Really, right here, if you notice, we are not born in Christ. We are born in the world. We are born of flesh. What we have to do is we have to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Then we are in Christ. Okay? Any questions you have? Okay, good. All right. Right, so after is signed this way, but after the spirit book. The spirit can reference as the Holy Ghost. It's the same thing. Okay? Spirit that is given to us, right? Christ Jesus, he is the Holy Ghost. Okay? Ready for the next slide? Gets more interesting. Verse 2. Go ahead and read this for a moment. It's interesting. I'm going to explain a little further about this particular verse of scripture. I'll sign it. Let me go ahead and point to a particular part for now. It says, for the law of the spirit, okay, law of sin and death. Notice these two. Now I'll go ahead and sign verse two to you. It reads, for the law of the spirit, of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Which means it's something that we are, okay, we are born, but we are made free from our birth of sin and death, and we are made free from this. We're not, or we're born in, into the world. Right, and then we have to make we have to be made free from it. Okay, let me go ahead and explain a little further here. Um, let me find a good example. Um, verse two again. It says, "For the law of," but we understand in science we understand the law of gravity. Okay. The law of gravity, which means something that gravity, what gravity means is, is the thing that's pulling us back down to, to the ground. But we understand this as a law. It's something that exists, right? But when we understand it in that context, it's the law of the spirit. It's the way of the spirit. It is what it's, how it operates. And the same thing with the law of sin and death. It is the way of sin and death. It's how it operates. So if you have gravity, we have gravity on Earth, you take a ball, okay? And so what if we decide to do is we decide to throw this ball as hard as we can. Over the course of time, where is that ball going to go? When the speed reduces, where does it go? It goes down. That's the law of gravity, right? That's how gravity operates. If you throw it, it will eventually come back down to the ground. We are born 
right? And by virtue of being born into this world, the way of sin and death, that's how it operates. We're born into that. We can't just disassociate ourselves from it on our own terms, right? So we take a bird, okay? We take a bird. I have no time to, I didn't have any time to put any pictures together. This is kind of something I did this morning. But if we took a bird, so we, like I said, we take a bird. And you see, the, you know, birds have wings. Okay. When the wings are folded and you tie them to the bird, it is now bound and limited to the laws of gravity. Because you've taken away its ability to fly. It's not going to fly. Okay? We are in the same sense bound to the world without Christ. That freedom he can give us, we don't have. We are not free from sin on our own terms. We are born into sin and death. Just like that bird is who is tied, he can't untie himself. So if you follow the law of gravity, right, and the concepts that's taught in, in the law of gravity, and how if you take a ball and you were to drop it, it will go down. So understanding that, the law of sin and death will also be dragging you down. It's not something you can just escape. So if you are bound, like the bird is, if you take its wings and you tie it up, and it's not going to fly away. Yeah, that, that's a cool, yeah. So basically he said if you take a, a, a rope and you put it to an eagle, that eagle's not going to fly anywhere. I mean, it'll go somewhere, but it's, it, it's limited in how far it can go because it's tied down to the ground. In that same sense, we are born tied down. You can't just say, I'm free from the world because it doesn't work that way. That's why when Jesus Christ came down and died on the cross for us, he did so so that we are able to be free. So then we're able to then be born into the law of the spirit. And we're able to have that relationship with God. Because without that, there's no other name that we can be saved by. There's, there's only one name. And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. So come to me. Those who are thirsty, come to me. Be filled. It's beautiful. So again, like I use the illustration with the bird, if you were to tie the bird's wings down, the bird's not flying anywhere. You untie it, that bird is now free from the law of gravity in essence, and it can just fly away. Okay? So just in that sense, we get that Holy Ghost, and we are then free from the law of sin and death, and then we are able to be, we are able to be ready for the rapture of, of, of God's coming. But if we're bound to this world, we're going to miss that rapture. So thank God for the Holy Ghost, because there's no other way that we can be satisfied. There's no other place or no other thing that will relieve our, our, our life, our frustrations, our worries, our nerves, anxiousness, death, the fear of death, because we don't know where we're going. All of that is relieved and taken care of when we get the Spirit of God, because that fear of death is reduced, because we know, God, you have my eternal home. You, that's where I need to be. Because the spirit of Christ is in us. How is that done? That's done, obviously, first of all, by praising the Lord, by worshiping, by focusing on Him. Then you will then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as evidence, right? And it's not your language, it's a heavenly language, which shows evidence that you've received the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Amen? It's beautiful. Uh, oh, I'm just teaching. I'm just teaching. But I love to share this stuff. That's good. That's good. All right. So. Uh, okay. So it's right here. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus, which hath made me free. And I want you to know, Paul wrote this particular verse of scripture. He wrote it to the church saying, for the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. He's experienced the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Now it continues, free from, so from what? We were originally somewhere else, and that is what? The world. We were born into sin and death. And some of you think, oh, oh man, I want that Holy Ghost. Well, guess what? You can get it too. You can get it in this room. Amen? 
feel the Holy Ghost here? Half. Half. Half is half. It's, it's Old English. It's got the same meaning. Okay. Yeah, right. <coughs> Paul is so excited in writing this and understanding. He's saying, Christ, has, Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm no longer bound to these things. Because without the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, I'm lost. I can try to pull myself away from sin and death, but there's nowhere else to go. So I go right back to sin and death. Right? But now I have another destination. You know, I'm able to repent. I'm able to pull myself away from that. Through the infilling of the Holy Ghost, I'm able to then connect with the, the law and spirit of life. Right. And it's really exciting. I, I think it's, I, I want to uh, come up here to, to, to Tinder. And you as well. So these two, we oh, just back here. We did not force them to do anything. I, I want to say that. Um, right, can you see that clearly? Okay. Now. Oh, smart. Now, so you can see me. Okay. There was no forcing them to do anything. Some people are, oh, you're going to be forced to do. No, 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 no. There is no forcing. It ultimately is a decision that they made. If they didn't want to, they wouldn't have done it. But what they've just said is said, God, I want to fulfill what your word is. I don't want to have to listen to what ideas of men are or theologies that do deviate from the word of God. They saw what the word of God had to say, and so they acted on it, and they took it. So recently on Tuesday night, both of them were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they repented this sins, and now they are ready to receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they will, they will, they will, they will. It's not one of those things that it's a will maybe. It's a will, real story, true talk. It's going to happen. Today it could happen. Who knows? All right? Yeah. They are free. They're freeing themselves from the law of sin and death because they are obeying what the word of God has to say. Awesome. They're happy. They're happy. They're happy. They're happy. They received the revelation. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's truly inspiring. Because the understanding the freedom you have from being bound from the world, much like the illustration I gave with gravity and the bird, it won't go anywhere. Right? Oh, and I have a good idea. Uh, you don't mind if I go down these rabbit trails? Uh, he says he's benefiting from it. Okay. So I'll give you a good example. It looks good. And so I know somebody I somebody shared an example with me, and I was like, oh, that's nice. But then over time I did my own research, and I was like, yeah, that's actually a good example. So I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. So how do you capture a monkey? I'm not a good actor. Uh, I'm looked up. Oh. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> My feet are not hands. I'm different. Banana. Okay. So if you take a monkey and you're trying to capture it in the wild and you're chasing it around and it comes up a tree and good luck trying to climb up the tree and capture the monkey on your own. So you say, okay, watch me, monkey, watch me. Because the monkey is using its other hand feet saying, okay, do whatever you want. So what, what they can do, and it's really simple, it honestly is simple. You take a cage, and you take, and what I've learned, what people say, is you take something like sweet nuts, bananas, or anything like that, you put it down, and then what you do is you put a cage over it, and then you leave it there. Over time, you, I mean, you can leave that monkey, you can just head on your way. Wait for a while. And when you decide to come back, what you'll see is that monkey is stuck. Because what the monkey has done is stuck their hand through the cage, grabbed the food, but doesn't want to let it go. Because the monkey is not going to want to willingly let go of some food. It's got its hand on food, regardless of whether or not it's caught. And so they're so focused on holding on to that, they can't escape the, the, the bondage that they put themselves in. 
And just like that, we need to learn how to repent. We need to learn how to let go because we are bound to the world, but we want to be bound to Jesus Christ instead, which means that I need to put myself into the cage of the Holy Ghost so that when everything pulls me out or tries to pull me out, I'm holding on to this and I'm not getting yanked out. I'm stuck. Because you can't have your hand in both cages. It doesn't work that way. Your hand's either in the sin of death or the spirit of, of life. You, we've seen in, in Peter saying, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Sorry, not Peter, Paul. Paul says, I'm a prisoner of Christ. Right. And that's the idea we need to have. Okay? So just like that illustration I shared, he sticks his hand in and traps himself. Well, we, we start with our hand in the sin and death. What we need to do is we need to let that go through repentance because mothers are not going to want to willingly let go. And that's how we get stuck. When we do that, the devil's not worried about you because you're stuck. He knows he has you. You're not going anywhere. You're not letting go of it. When you let go of it, that's when you're, that's when you're a problem to the devil. So just like the monkey, the monkey is not going to be free and the monkey is going to be bound because of his desire of that food. And I like that illustration so that we, you know, people are bound to this world because of what this world has to offer. But we need to instead be bound to Jesus Christ. We need to let go of what this world has to offer. And I like that illustration because in understanding that we let go and we re-hold onto the things and how we do that is through the Holy Ghost. Okay? Yeah. We ready for the next verse? Scripture three out of it goes all the way into the book of Revelation. You ready? Yeah. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> There's just a few more scriptures left for today. <laughs> oh, somebody's saying we want a longer class. We'll see. Uh, more, more deaf people will come. Now, notice you notice they're coming because they're hungry. They're not forced to come. They want to see and want to get what we're having here. A good example is Brother Chatinder and, and his wife coming in and wanting to know more. They're truly sweet people. There are more people out there that are coming. And we can see them receiving the infilling of the Holy Ghost and seeing them coming out of the water baptized in Jesus' name. So he says he feels it, yeah, because God is here with us. Amen? The Bible is truly amazing. It is ultimately is our choice to obey it or not. The Bible does not have four legs that can just run off and force us to chase it. It's not a turtle with a shell. It's, it's not escaping from us. We can either pick it up and open it up, or we can leave it there. That's ultimately our choice. You know how if your face has wrinkles, you're a good reader and analyzer. <laughs> okay, get back to my... I made me drink too much coffee this morning. I ate seven donuts. No, I didn't. But still, I still have the word of God, and I'll still share it with you. Yeah, okay. I have my facial wrinkles because I've spent plenty of time analyzing and reading this. But when you sit down, you relax if you want, put your feet up on a table, open up the book, maybe take a cup of, a cup of hot tea or coffee or whatever is your fancy, and you think about the, all the to-dos usually when it comes to that point. We think of our to-dos and we try to read through, through our thoughts. I've had experiences with this. I'm sure you have as well. You try to read through your thoughts and it's distracting. It's tough. You've got to force yourself into it. You have to discipline yourself. And without discipline, you're lost. You discipline yourself. You can't just say, hey, pastor, discipline me. That's not how it works. You have to discipline yourself. You have a choice, right? I have a choice. Even though I'm here at ministry to you, it's still my choice, right? I can force myself to read and be distracted and try to discipline myself. But over time, it gets easier because once that I get to a certain point, discipline goes out the window because now I'm interested. Now it's, I'm engaged. But that's ultimately up to you. That's your choice. God is good. And I look forward to Brother, Brother Candido. He's working on his lesson right now. He's preparing. And whenever he's ready, he let me know. And I'll sit in the corner and I'll be cheering him on. And I'll be learning. Okay. So enough for now. Oh, and Kyle. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Uh, Kyle will be teaching here. He will. Some of you are saying yes. 
Uh, am I retired? Am I retiring soon? No. No, I'm still ministering. I'll still minister, minister until the day I die. When, when Jesus says, all right, you've had enough. I'm going to need to take you home. That's the only time I'll stop. Okay. Oh. Um, so I already explained explain this clearly. If the ERV is the easy read version. I didn't plan on putting this there, but I thought this would go nicely with verse 2. I just explained this. But... Um, that is because in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit that brings life made you free. It made you free from the law that brings sin and death. Okay, verse 3. Verse 3. What time is it? It's 11.30. Better go quickly here. Verse 3 reads, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, because the law of, of the flesh and the law of sin and death is, is not going to help me. Okay? God sending his own son, the scripture continues here, in the likeness of sinful flesh. Understand, Jesus has no sin. He came in its likeness so that he can die, accept the burden of that for you. Okay? And for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Okay? Let me go to a... Okay, there you go. Easy read version. It's the same verse, but there's an easy reader version. A little bit clearer. Okay? Uh, the law was without power. Because it was made weak by our sinful selves. Okay? The point of that is the Holy Ghost can help us. That's the only thing that can help us. Okay? I'm making a simple here. Scripture continues. But God did what, he, what the law could not do. He sent his own son to earth with the same human life that everyone else uses for sin. God sent him to be an offering to pay for sin, so God knew and you and I have to destroy sin. Yeah. So God came to earth, all, died on a cross, so that we are able to be forgiven from our sins. Okay. Verse 4 that the righteous, well, hold on. What does the righteous mean? What does that mean to you? The righteousness. What does that mean? There's different signs for it. Sign it this way, like pure or clean. Some people sign it differently. I just sign it this way. But what does that mean to you? The Holy Spirit. Uh, what else? Righteousness. Understanding that with the Holy Ghost, being filled with the Holy Ghost, righteousness means having the same character as Jesus. Right? We're being saved. He's righteous, he's clean, so that we are righteous, we are clean. He loves, we love. He is patient, we are patient. He encourages, we encourage. When he encourages, we should not be discouraging or offensive, right? We should be encouraging. But also, that means comes to our thoughts being right, our speech being right, our actions being right. Because we can we understand that we can be before God at any time and he's watching us. Everything we do, he has his eyes on us. How he does that is through the Holy Ghost. Being filled and you being, you being filled with it. That Holy Ghost is in you and that Holy Ghost serves as that anchor for you. Okay? Simple, simple, basic, simple. But now, if you add the prefix un, unrighteousness, or unrighteous, which means you are not like it. You are, you're going to go ahead and just do your own thing. You are not like God. You are not following the character, characteristics of God. You decide to do your own thing in the world, which means you think the raw thoughts, you say the wrong things, you act the wrong way, you say the wrong things, you do what the world wants. That's unrighteous. But if you're righteous, it means you follow the character of God. And if you do so, and you have, then you have the love of God. But, 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 do you love your neighbor? That's ultimately the question. Do you love your neighbor? If you can do so, you can act perfectly. It's very simple. So God, 
Jesus, was very patient with each and every one of us. And because of that, I have to have the same patience. He's loved us, I have to love you. Because we, have, we are filled with the Holy Ghost. And you look at it in our Bibles. In our Bibles, it says so right here. You read it and you think, wow, God has been patient. He's merciful. He's compassionate. Uh, yes. Nine of what, you said? The, the fruits of the Spirit or fruits, uh, gifts of the Spirit? Uh, spirit of life? Are you talking about the Spirit of life? Yes. Love, yes. He, he brings up an interesting thing. He just... He just mentioned something, and I, I want to talk about it a little bit. I set up a PowerPoint about the fruits of the Spirit. I have it. I've been putting it off. Uh, guess when it's the right time. You know, I've been jumping around to other scriptures and, and doing it. Whenever it is the right time, I will get back to the fruits of the Spirit. I will teach all the fruits of the Spirit. It's very interesting. And someday I will explain it. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Appreciate it. Okay. So... Is that the righteousness of the law, verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. That's the Holy Ghost. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 5. I have five more scriptures, I think, and then I'm done. For they, verse 5, for they that are after the flesh, which means, uh, right here, it says, after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. So they that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. You, you think about it, you act on it, you, you do these things that, have been, that are now sitting and, 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 and staying in your mind. And that's different from the things of the Spirit. If you look at Jesus, Jesus did not sit and, and let the thoughts of this world rest and stay in his mind. Right? Verse 5 again, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But, okay, we've said one thing. We're going to go ahead and change. We're going to be at the opposite here. The opposite end. Do mind the things of the flesh. Yeah, it talks about this world. So it's the pleasures of this world and, and, and seeking satisfaction because you're, you're, you're thinking about it and, and you do so in direct opposition to God, knowing that it's against the word of God. That's wrong. Okay? Scripture continues here at, at verse 5. It says, but, here's a change. Here's a change. It says, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. If you do that, the world will recognize there's something different about you. And that comes through love. Right, exactly, exactly. And it goes that right. And it's not one of those things that, okay, like, evil is flesh. Spirit, things of the spirit are not evil. Oh, envy. But they are according. Okay, right here it says, "But they are, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit." Thinking about what? Think about things of this world. Think about things of the spirit. No, 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 no. Getting rid of it. Does that, that mean you've accepted it? If you're saying, I have to get rid of it, that means at some point you've had to accept it. Or, or, or are you talking about temptation and you're rejecting the temptation? That's different. Yes. That's, that's a completely different context. Yeah. No, no, no. No, go ahead and show me the verse of scripture you're referring to, okay? Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death. Carnally, or flesh. For to be carnally minded is death. 
you think about the things of this world and you are not thinking about the things of the spirit, that is death. But, but, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. <laughs> Read on our Bibles, coming to church, sharing the word of God. Opposite of the things of this world, and opposite of the things that I want to do my way, and pleasures of sin for my flesh, that's different. That's separate, right? That's separate. And what we need to do is we need to turn ourselves away from that temptation, leave that temptation. Because what we can do is we can look at that temptation and allow us to start controlling us. We shouldn't be doing that. What we should do is reject that temptation, turn, and go towards the things of God. That's, I, I know that's really basic, but yes. Right. Shh. Following the things of God, yes, that's right. Verse 7. Because, verse scripture 7 reads, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither, indeed, which I know is confusing. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is the, uh, so the NKJV shows it a little differently. Oh, no, I don't have it in here. I didn't put it in. Huh? Well, I didn't put it in. Okay. It says, neither indeed can be. In the NKJV, it shows it a little differently. Not obey, basically it translates to not able to obey it. Right, not able to obey it is how the NKJV says this part here. Neither indeed. So you go back. What is it talking about? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, or is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And the NKJV means it's not able to obey it. It's not able to obey the law of God. Obedience is important. You have to act on it. Once you, once you have that revelation, you then act on it. That's your arrest. Your, that's you obeying it according to your revelation. Verse 8. Simple. Verse 8 reads, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Because there is a separation. Again. Verse 9. Verse 9, yes, that's right. I, I explained this a little bit to you before. This is what I've been trying to get to, right? This is the, the one that is taken out and people just read it. And sh -sh -sh -sh. People take it and they read it and they take it out of context, but what I try to do is try to put it back in context so you can read it. And verse 9 reads, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I've read that to you before. And then verse 10. Question, dwell. What is dwelling? Dwell means to live, to live in. Okay. The Spirit of Christ lives in you. How is that done? That's done through the Holy Ghost. Now we understand that the Holy Ghost can get rid of that. Um, I don't have the Holy Ghost, that means I'm none of His. But once I get that, then I am. And that's the obviously we understand that as being born again and being transferred into the family of Jesus and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 10, and if Christ be in you, <coughs> the body is dead. <coughs> because the desires of this world has died. Okay? And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life. Because of righteousness. Amen. We got, we got a few amens. We are not just doing something like that. We're not, we're not just being like, wow, that's, that's an interesting passage of Scripture. And I'm going to go ahead and do my own thing on Monday. That's not what we should be doing. We need to be acting upon what our Scripture says to us. 
Someone's saying, I like the scripture saying, you cannot serve God and man, right? Money and things in this world. Right, you cannot do that. You cannot serve two masters. Yeah, you're right. You can't serve both masters simultaneously. That's, that's not how it works. It's not how it works. You serve one or you serve the other. Right? If you serve both, you're actually serving one. You're lukewarm. And God will spit you out. God does not like you being lukewarm, walking on the line, holding on both ends. No, it's saying in, in God we trust on our money is what you're referring to. That's not what I'm talking about. What she's saying is you're saying the love of money. Right, that's different. Not necessarily the fact that God is on our money. It's not what she's talking about. She's talking about your obsession of it. The only thing you think of is money. That's when you serve it as your master. Because there was one man, and this is according to what he has said. And he was a business owner, very successful. And I actually learned this from Brother Dale Delp. He shared this with me and... He read this article and showed it to me. And this man, very wealthy, he said, he said, my goal is to be absolutely rich. He gets there and he thought, well, I need a little more, just a little bit more. And he keeps becoming more and more wealthy. And it just grows and grows and grows and grows to the point it never stopped. He was never satisfied. And we have to learn to let go of that and allow God to bless us because there's satisfaction in that. It's very different. If you seek for the things of this world, you'll never be satisfied. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We are never going to find anything in this world that will please us forever except for God. The Holy Ghost will satisfy you. Right. With the Holy Ghost, it makes a difference. Anything according to the flesh is... Uh, Everything, anything according to the flesh and of this world, things will pass away, but God's will will live eternally, and that's what's important. Exactly. Because everything in this world will pass away. So why be greedy for the things that mean nothing? When it passes away, I'll pass away with it. That's a good explanation. We don't need doctor so-and-so big name stuff. We don't, we don't need all that. This is written in a high school reading line. I'm teaching high school reading level material. And some people say, oh, no, 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 no. I don't know what it's actually saying. No. Now, one more verse of scripture and I'm done. People are getting restless. I understand you're ready to go eat. Oh, we got some people saying, I want more of the word of God. Brother Casey's saying, go all the way to Revelation. Okay. All right. Let's take a break. Let's go eat lunch. We'll be back. We'll keep going. All right. Uh, I believe this is the last scripture. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or give life to your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It's through that that you're able to be re The Holy Ghost is, is, is necessary. I have to understand any questions because the next one any is really important. Any questions? No questions? You got everything so far? Wow. The Holy Ghost is precious, exactly right. Exactly right. His testimony is incredible. His testimony is incredible. Coming back to it and understanding it and cherishing it more than ever. It's, it's, it's important. But his experience is incredible. Ready? Okay. The word of God is really amazing, correct? <coughs> if you feel it in your heart and you feel that conviction, you feel it, that's precious because that's God encouraging you to change your life. 
if you don't feel it, that's when we're sure we should be scared. But thank God for the word of God. Thank God for feeding us his word and following in. And I look forward to God's return at any time. Isaiah 55, verse 8 through 9. It's touched me. It's incredible. Yes, I'll have to, I'll have to read that. I'll have to read that. So I guess we are done. Okay. Let's go ahead and pray in closing. Brother Candido. Yeah. Did you enjoy that, that lesson? That was incredible. That was incredible. God's spirit is really amazing and it's something that we should cherish. It's very important. I, I take it God's word. Thank you, brother. Uh, thank you, God, for brother Nolan. Thank you, God, for the lesson. Uh, understanding that we should be following the, the ways of the spirit, not the flesh. In Jesus' name, Amen.